G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today, I'm going to be reacting to your AFL unpopular opinions. I did this video earlier in the year and you guys seem to enjoy it, so we're gonna do it again. Thanks to everyone who chipped in with their unpopular opinions. If you wanna be a part of the next one, follow me on Instagram at kados38. Be sure to chuck it on my story when I do it again. Just before we get into the video, we are very close to 60,000 subscribers. The subscribers have been rocketing up in the last couple of weeks, so I appreciate everyone just jumping on board. If you watch the channel consistently, chuck a sub, join the army, get around it, and uh, yeah, more content coming in the future, obviously. St Kilda will finish in the top eight. Richmond and Eagles won't make it. Isaac, that is a huge take. I don't think the Tigers will make it either, and I think the Eagles are probably the most vulnerable. And given the last couple of weeks, here come the Saners. I thought they were gone for all money this season. I wrote them off, but they are playing some great footy. So that's a great take, and there's a couple of moving parts in there, but it could come true. The AFL MVP is a better award than the Brownlow Munro Jumpers says. That's a tough one for mine, Andy. I think the Brownlow probably still is the award you want to win. AFL MVP can be a bit of a popularity contest at times, but uh, yeah, for me, the Brownlow is the pinnacle. Camo says Cody Waitman is better than Cozzy Pickett. I like Cody Waitman. I think he's an unbelievable talent. I remember the chat going into the draft and it was between the D's picking Cozzy Pickett and Cody Waitman. I'm not sure if that was from the club's point of view or whether that was just in the fantasy and phantom drafts. I think both teams would be really, really happy. Obviously, Cody Waitman took a little bit of time to break into the doggy side this year, but now that he has, he's a very, very consistent, exciting player. And um, yeah, obviously, Cozzy Pickett's been really, really solid for the D's this season as well. But they're both so young and both so exciting that I think both clubs will be stoked to have them. JJG, 16. Eddie Maguire is actually one of the best commentators right now. Yeah, me and Roger are massive on the Eddie Maguire fan group. I love his passion, and there's nothing better than when you tune in and Eddie Maguire starts whipping your team home. I was watching a couple of weeks ago, and it was Essendon taking on West Coast, and he was getting so excited that the Bombers were turning it on. Eddie Maguire, I do really, really rate as one of the better commentators. Matt Friendly, Geelong are the best chance to win the GF. I'm not sure if that's an unpopular opinion. I think they should be one of the favourites. They're very consistent every year. Uh, they're a very solid, solid football side who make prelims and grand finals for fun. Yeah, they're a team that made the grand final last year and then added every man and their dog onto their list going into this season. So I think I think they should be one of the favourites to win. Henry, the D's are good, but way too inexperienced to win a flag anytime soon. I think that's a, a take that a lot of people have. I think there's a lot of reservations on the D's. I think they're mature enough to get it done. I'm not saying that they will by any means. I'm a bit of a pessimist D supporter. I think the only way I would uh, dispute that in any way is this team has played finals before. Um, obviously in 2018, which was a lifetime ago, they played finals, so they do have a touch of experience. And I also think last year, obviously 2020, the D's finished ninth, but there was two or three elimination final games uh, to finish our season. We needed to win uh, the last two or three to have a hope of making finals, and we won big pressure games. So whether that counts for something, time will tell. Alum has written in, Tim O'Brien's mark against GWS will be mark of the year. I rate that as an unpopular opinion. It was a massive fly, the high he got and then to sort of get tunneled was awesome and I think marks in the goal square are just the pinnacle of hangers. I think if you're going to take a hanger anywhere on the ground, the goal square is the place to do it. I personally think Jack Rewalt will be mark of the year. I still can't get over him clunking that mark in the wet, running back with the flight and then taking the hang. Michael, the atmosphere at Marvel Stadium is better than the MCG. I rate that as an unpopular opinion though, but I personally think the MCG is rocking. Uh, when it gets going. Potentially that's because the games that I mainly go to are Melbourne Footy Club and, a, and we're an MCG home team. So when I do go to Marvel, if it is a D's home game, it can be a little bit flatter. But yeah, I personally think the MCG, there's nothing that compares to it. Hayden, Richmond are still one of the favorites to win the premiership if they get healthy. See, obviously if they get healthy, they're a good footy side, but half the battle of winning a flag is staying fit and there's been so many teams over the years who don't have the healthy list and it sort of counts them out for a premiership i remember collingwood for a couple of years in a row were just decimated with injuries when if they had their full list they would have been a much better side so half the battle is keeping your team on the park and um, yeah unfortunately for the tigers three or four years of limited pre-seasons because you're playing the last game of the year i think catches up to you but i don't think it's the end of the era for the tigers the season should only be 18 rounds 36 is too long 18's a bit short for mine though. 18 week season, that's 
that's nothing compared to other major sports. That's an interesting one though, because it probably makes the season really, really fair. Like obviously teams like the Bulldogs have been able to play like a North and, and whatnot a couple of times, which helps your bank some wins. And then, you know, other teams have harder fixtures, which can make things quite tricky. Um, but if you play each other once, it sort of does make it a little bit more even. So not a bad call, Kizza. Kynan, Toby Green is the best small forward in the comp and is overhated. Yeah, he's starting to get his, his just desserts now. People are starting to get around Tobes Green. Yeah, he is one of the best small forwards in the comp for mine. The Bont won't win the Brownlow this year. I don't mind that. I think it's tighter than what people think. I reckon Darcy Parrish and Clayton Oliver are right up in the conversation. And it'll be interesting to see who wins it, to be honest. But um, yeah, if it's not the Bont, you could throw a, uh, a blanket over about five or six players. Suns will be premiers before the Giants. That's an interesting call because the Giants have had their peak and are sort of starting to reassemble another crack at it and the Suns have just never got going but the Suns have a really solid core group. Really really interesting debate. Comment down below who you think will win a flag first, the Suns or the Giants. Bailey Smith isn't attractive. <laughs> That is an unpopular opinion, Matty. I can tell you something for nothing. He is a saucy bastard, though. He is. Oh, jeez. I think if he got rid of the mullet, he would go to an, an extra level, the big Baz I, I think, yeah, for me personally, I think he's a, a really strapping young lad, so I can see why everyone gets around him. Abby Holmes is an underrated boundary rider. I think she's gotten elite over the last couple of years. I remember when she first sort of started, it was a little bit clunky. I'm not trying to be critical of anyone doing the best job that they can, but I, I felt like it was a little bit clunky, a little bit awkward at times, but now she dominates it. I reckon Abby, Abby Holmes is really, really solid on the boundary, so uh, yeah, props to her. Dustin Martin is overhyped in the media. He is hyped in the media and probably overhyped. Like, there is a lot of articles and a lot of posts about him, but I don't think someone who gets hyped in the media means he's not a good player. Like a lot of people go, oh, Dusty Martin shit. And you go, well, why do you say that? Oh, because the AFL posts about him all the time and I'm sick of it. Well, it doesn't mean he's shit. It just means the AFL media is excited because we're witnessing one of the greatest players to ever play this game. And then that's when the Australian tall poppy syndrome kicks in. It's like any Dusty Martin post. It's like, oh, we're sick of this bloke. We hate him. He isn't that good. No, he is that good. He's, he's one of the best ever. And there might not be another Dusty Martin for the next 20, 30 years. I feel like we should really embrace someone like him rather than just taking them for granted personally. All right, guys, that's it for another video. I really appreciate all the support. I appreciate everyone who contributed to the unpopular opinions. And yeah, I'll see you soon for some more content. Cheers.